Welcome back everyone. Now as promised, today we're going to be doing a uh, culture swap video for a couple of my species here. Uh, we got three of them that we're going to do today and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Alright guys, so what I did is I uh, took my drill here and I drilled some holes in here and um, I drilled some holes with the other bit. Uh, the smaller one here. and the sides over here as you can see some more in that one for the larger species that I'm going to be rehousing today and then also what I did is I took this knife here and I just went around the inside to clean it up a little bit just like that now you gotta be careful whenever you're using knives because they are sharp so we're just going to quickly clean up the inside of the holes and we'll move on to the next step there. Looks a lot better, doesn't it? There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and get the plastic out of here and then we'll move on to the next step. Alright everyone, so now that we got our bins drilled and our lids drilled out, we're gonna take some of the dirt that we uh, mixed up last week and we're gonna fill up these bins. This is probably the messiest process, so you're gonna to want to be careful here. But you're gonna to want to put a fair amount in there. Oh, see, I'm already making a mess here. But we don't want to put in too much because we are gonna be using some of the dirt that's already in the bins. just want to fill it up about halfway so that the isopods have some new substrate underneath and then as long as the substrate inside of the container that they're in right now is still healthy and good we'll be filling up the rest of the container with that now in between last week and this week, I did hear a couple things online about some people not liking the coconut fibers in the dirt um, because it doesn't give any beneficial uh, stuff to the isopods. However, I do enjoy using it because it keeps a moisture uh, gradient in there. Something to hold a little bit more moisture where I live. It's kind of dry right now and I don't usually spray twice a week. I prefer to spray once a week. So it helps keep it nice and moist for me throughout the week. So I'm gonna fill up the other two containers, just like this one here, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right guys, so here we got three different bins set up for uh, my isopods. Now, the one step I did forget that uh, I'm gonna do right next, it's still okay, is um, I gotta tape up the holes on the sides and on the lids so that uh, nothing can get out. So I'm gonna grab some of my medical tape, my breathable medical tape, and I'm gonna tape them up, and then uh, I'll start putting isopods in these guys. All right, now before we get started here, I just wanna mention when we put on, when I put on the tape, um, you always gotta make sure that you want the sticky side facing inwards to stop anything that's trying to get in from getting in, like flies or anything. And uh, obviously to not have your isopods get stuck. So the first uh, species we're gonna be taking a look at is my uh, my Procellia lavis um, milkbacks. So there's obviously way too many in here for this small container now, as you'll see in a couple seconds, and we're gonna be transferring it over. So the first thing I'm gonna do, oh my goodness, look at this. So I'm gonna take the piece of bark, and I'm gonna move it over and then uh, we're going to slowly move everything else over starting with the, the moss and we're going to want to keep that on the wet side so I actually got to flip this around here and I'm going to want to keep the wet side on the wet side in the new container and the dry stuff on the dry side in the new container so I'm going to just start by transferring all the leaves over and whatnot 
and then we'll slowly move the soil over after. I'm gonna take a spoon here and I'm gonna slowly transfer over everything, starting with the wet side to the wet side, like I said. So that everybody who's on the moisture side and needs to be on the moisture side stays there. Everybody who wants to be on the dry side can stay on the dry side. I'm just gonna carefully scoop these in. Alevis is a burying species. As you can see, there's a lot just buried down underneath in here. So I'm just carefully scooping them out. Don't want to hurt nobody. I want to make sure everybody feels safe as we slowly move over. And again, as you can see, as I'm slowly taking it to the drier side, spreading it over the new dry side of the bigger container. isopods in this dry side here. As you can see as I'm scooping them out, they're just coming out from everywhere. Uh, I'm gonna just kind of carefully dump out the rest because there's a lot in there and I feel like the spoon's gonna hurt them if anything. Just get the rest of the dirt out there. Now as you can see there is a lot of milk bags in here running around. You see them everywhere. Get a closer look here. There are a lot of milk backs in here. So it was definitely time for a change. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab some of this uh, terrarium moss that I've moistened down. And we're gonna try to line the wet side of the container a little bit more. There is some sphagnum moss in there already, but we need a little bit more in here, so. Don't wanna to use too much, but we wanna make sure that one side is fairly well lined. another piece of bark in here. To have them feel safe and securely hidden. And then uh, I would fill this side up with leaves, but uh, unfortunately I don't have any leaves ready right now. I gotta have them soak and be cleaned off before I can put any in this container. Uh, so we're gonna move on to the next one now. So the next species I have is my Porcelia Valencia species. Now I find that these guys are quite similar to the Spanish. I don't know exactly where these are from, but I find that they're very similar to the Spanish isopods. So I'm going to be setting this one up um, with a little bit less dirt because a lot of them don't seem to be underground, unlike the other species, uh, like the Lavis and uh, the, the Canyons. Those and the dwarf whites, they all like to dig underneath where I find these guys are more, um, they like to hide on top of the soil and in the bark here, you'll see in a second here. Yeah, see, there's a lot of them. Let me try to get a better angle for you. There's a lot of them in the bark here. There's a big guy just crawling around on the dirt there. So we're gonna carefully transfer this one over. 
Again, we're gonna try to keep the wet side with the wet side and the dry side with the dry side. That's one big isopod, I tell you. Yeah. Try to get, a, get them up closer here for you. Just don't wanna scare them too much. Come here. It's all good. Oh, he doesn't wanna get up on my hand. move the camera closer so we can see here they're quite a beautiful and large species like that's him compared to my finger there pretty big now nowhere near the size of Hoffman sag eye or stuff like that but definitely quite large and very similar to the Spanish species with their long tails and uh, antennae now I've had quite a bit of luck with these guys, surprisingly. Um, I did not know that they were gonna be like that when I first got them, but obviously I have enough in here that I think I need to move them into a bigger container, so that's what I'm gonna do. One interesting thing I find about these species is that um, the males seem to be very orange where the females seem to be more of a gray color. They are some females in here as well that are a gray color, but for the most part, a lot of them are like that. Carefully move some of this moist soil over to the moist side. Try not to hurt anybody as I do this. an example there of a female if I can get a close-up on her see so she's got that gray coloration to her where that large orange male we saw earlier looked quite different These guys are quite fast, so. I think I'm gonna try transferring them over by lowering it down. And I do see a little bit of young underneath. But for the most part, the majority of them are on top. So I really don't think these guys are gonna bury, burrow too much. Definitely gonna be mad at me for this transfer. Move that around a little. Spanish species I'm gonna be giving them some bark that's gonna keep them off the ground because a lot of the Spanish species seem to dislike being on the ground they need to get up and uh, be above and then again we're gonna just put in a bunch of this moist terrarium moss here said normally I would line this side with uh, leaves but uh, I don't have any ready yet so we're gonna move on to our third and final vulture that we're gonna be swapping today 
so the third and final culture we're going to be swapping today is my Armadillidi Armadillidium maculatums or my zebra isopods. Now as everybody knows, zebras breed like crazy. So obviously I have hundreds of them. Let's see if I can get a better angle for you guys. Here. There we go. Now you can see how many there are. There's a lot of these guys in here. So I'm gonna carefully move some of this stuff over here. I'm trying to keep the dry side with the dry side and the wet side with the wet side. Uh, that's a lot of them. That's a lot of zebras. So these guys definitely need to be transferred over as you can see here. There is a lot of isopods in here. Move the moss over. And now there's just a lot of guys in here and I don't want to risk hurting anyone. So what I'm going to do is like I did with the other ones, these guys are pretty tough species. So I'm going to take them and I'm going to carefully just kind of roll them out and spread them along. Again, dry side, dry side, wet side, wet side. And carefully spread it around. And then uh, again, we're gonna take some of our moss. And we're gonna just line up this one side just full of moss. cultures that we uh, needed to swap today. Now, I, while I was feeding today, I did find out that uh, I do have actually some more cultures I'm going to need to swap out. So I'm going to be doing another uh, culture swap next week where we're going to swap out two more species. So look forward to that one. Um, last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to feed them up um, before the leaves get all... Um, cleaned I guess of any debris and then uh, that's it Well, thanks for joining me today, guys. Um, yeah, have a great week, and uh, we'll see you next week.